Hey friends, let's get moving for our arms and shoulders. So today you're gonna need a strap. And if you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a tie or a martial arts belt or a scarf or a regular belt, whatever works. Um, if it's stretchy, it might um, kind of inhibit the movements that we're trying to do. So try to choose um, something that doesn't have any give to it. And then the second thing you'll need is two books. So if your arms and shoulders are feeling really strong and stable today, maybe you decide to, to choose the Beatles and Barack Obama with me, <laughs> some exhaustive biographies. Um, if your arms and shoulders aren't feeling super stable, then maybe you choose some uh, lower volume, thinner books. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna begin standing and we're gonna spread our toes apart on the right foot. And we're gonna glue the big toe down so that the right big toe is kind of pointing over to the left diagonally. And then you're gonna spin your foot so that that fans your toes out nice and wide on your practice space. And then you can take your left foot back a little bit into kind of a short lunge that requires your back leg to stay bent. So we're not doing a really big step here. And if balance is an issue, by all means, be near the wall for extra support. So we're gonna kind of mimic the um, movement that we do when we walk. So we're going to, I have to, I have to get synced up as well. So usually, you know, the opposite arm moves forward with the leg. Okay. So here in our starting position, our left arm is going to be a little bit forward and our right arm is going to be a little bit back. So we can take a breath in and sink into the lunge. And then as we exhale, straighten up the legs and the arms switch. So that means the right arm comes forward, left hand comes back. Inhale to bend, exhale to extend, moving the arms. And you can just find a comfortable pace. Maybe you're speed walking like this. Or maybe you're going for a little stroll. There's no right or wrong. Choose a speed that feels kind for your body today. One more. Great, now let's switch. So step your left foot up and we're gonna fan the toes out just like we did on the right foot. So you're gonna put your left big toe on the ground so that you're kind of, you would be pigeon toed. Your, your foot is pointing over towards the right. But then you're gonna twist on that toe as you fan your, your toes apart to get a nice wide foot. And then the right foot steps back into your kind of shortened lunge stance, okay? So here for our starting position, right arm is forward, left arm is back. So again, the inhale happens um, when you're kind of in this coiled up position. And then the exhale is where you do the work. So again, maybe you are speed walking. If you wanna feel your heart rate increase, your breathing rate increase, this might be a good choice for you. If you're trying to take a leisurely stroll though, maybe you slow it down. Just trying to get the body a little bit warm. And you may be thinking, Jen, I thought this class was about our arms and shoulders, but my legs are on fire. Just do one more. Great job. It does a lot to warm up your body, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so take a, a stance that's maybe a little bit wider than your hips, toes pointing straight ahead. Okay, so here, go ahead and lift your arms overhead without taking your rib cage or your spine up and back as well. Just take the arms up and then we're gonna open up to the left and the left arm is gonna paint a big rainbow back behind us and then we'll bring it back, erase it, and <laughs> come back to center. And over to the right side. Now, as you take your right arm back and paint that big rainbow, you're trying to kind of eke out as much range of motion as you can. You're really looking for the edges of your range of motion. Notice 
If your rib cage wants to kind of lift up as you reach your arm back, see if you can keep your breath in your back body, in the back side of your rib cage for this movement. Feel how the back of your rib cage can expand when you inhale. There's so much space back there for your breath and breathing back there with your focus there can really help to temper that um, desire of your rib cage to arc up. One more each way. Finishing on the right, great job. Okay, lower your arms, bring your hands to your hips. Make sure that your rib cage is stacked over your pelvis. This would be another great place to imagine you're breathing back here into your back low ribs. That can really help you to avoid thrusting the rib cage, okay? And keep it in that more neutral stacked position. Okay, so spread your toes nice and wide. Just because we're thinking about our shoulders doesn't mean we can't focus on our feet too. So you're gonna to start to pitch your hips back as you hinge from the hip creases here. And as you start to pitch your torso forward, watch and pay attention. Does your core abdominal um, muscular start, musculature start to fire up? Does your tummy start to activate as you hinge forward? Hopefully it does, okay? So let's go ahead and hinge forward. And you can maybe come, maybe you're just leaning forward a little bit. Maybe you're kind of at a 45 degree. Maybe you're uh, parallel to the ground a little bit more. Whatever feels well for your back. If you feel well supported in your core, um, in your front core, your back core is probably gonna be good too. Okay, so hinging forward. Now we're gonna point the hands down towards the ground, okay? And then from here, we're gonna do, uh, take the left arm and kind of paint open across the right arm and across the chest, reaching the left arm up any amount. Now I'm gonna encourage you to keep your gaze down at the ground, down at your um, prayer position hands here, okay? Then the right arm is going to paint up and open up towards the ceiling. And then you bring your hands back together. Now let's take a breath in, breathing into the back, and exhale. Stand up. Okay, we're gonna come back to that movement throughout class today to keep um, our cores and our trunk muscles nice and awake and active as we are working our arms and shoulders. Okay, so now take your arms out in front of you, so your, your elbow is not quite straight in front of your shoulder. It's more out about 45 degrees, okay? And then you're gonna give me a thumbs up and you're gonna point your thumb back behind you. So I'm gonna turn sideways so that you can see that my elbow is forward in space than my thumb. It's more forward in space than my thumb. So um, this would be my thumb being more forward than my elbow. It might be a stack. Maybe a stack is as far as you can go. Um, maybe you have a little bit of room to tilt and rotate um, so that the, the wrist and the thumb move behind the elbow. So that's what we want. We're gonna do that with both arms, okay? Thumbs pointing back. And then keeping the um, upper arm rotated just like this, we want the thumb to beat the elbow as we move the elbows apart. Okay, and then we're just gonna come back together. Breathing into the back. Great job. So I feel this a lot, yes, in between my shoulder blades, um, but I also feel it a lot right here, like at the back of my armpit. And I also feel it kind of up at the top of my shoulder blade. Okay, so think about where you're feeling this activity. Again, breathing into the back is going to help to keep that rib stack, the ribs stacked over the pelvis. And why is that important? Why do we want to keep our ribs stacked over the pelvis? Well, that ensures that most of the movement that we're doing is getting focused into the shoulders, into the shoulder joint. 
as opposed to into the spine as well. Okay. Who I'm feeling it. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling it. <laughs> so let's do three, two, and one. Great job. Okay, lower your arms. And we're gonna do a little bit of internal rotation and external rotation. Okay, so your arm that's reaching down forward in front of you, palm faces away from your body, that's internal rotation. And the other arm is externally rotated, okay? And we're just gonna go back and forth. <laughs> okay, now let's reach down and grab the strap. My strap is the most ridiculous length. It is so long. So I've got mine kind of folded up. Um, we're gonna start by taking the strap behind the back, okay? But we're gonna grip the strap so that our palms face the back side of our bodies, okay? And again, I'm, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. We wanna feel that breath in the back of the rib cage here. Because the tendency will be, as we start to pull the strap apart and lift the arms up and back behind us, um, we're gonna wanna feel like, oh, we can maybe get it up a little bit higher than, um, than just the arms will. Uh, you, you might feel this urge to arch through your back. And again, let's focus all of this movement right into the arms and shoulders. So breathing into the back, keeping the ribs tempered, Pull the strap apart and take the arms straight up and back behind you, any amount, and release. But keep that pulling apart motion as you lift and lower here. Make sure your neck is relaxed. It might help to find a point of focus that's a little bit lower than the horizon. Okay, now this time, go ahead and lift the strap up behind you, and then we're gonna pull it from side to side. Still holding tension on the strap, so I'm still trying to rip the strap apart. Whew, feeling it in the shoulders. <laughs> okay, for three, two, and one. Okay, go ahead and relax. Let's put the strap off to the side. We are gonna come back to it again, so don't get rid of it. And let's come back to our hinge, our hip hinge position. So feet maybe a little bit wider than your hips so you have a solid foundation. Spread the toes. And now, breathing into the back so that the rib cage is stacked, you're gonna start to pitch your hips backwards. So you're really creasing um, at the hips here, the inguinal line, the bikini line area, okay? And as you shift the hips back and the torso hinges forward, you should feel some core musculature starting to fire up, okay? You might have to do it a few times to, to start to feel it. You can also try tapping with one finger along your abdominal wall and that can help to kind of like wake up your core muscles. Just like if you're trying to wake somebody up, you kind of shake them or poke them a little bit. Same thing with your core. So you can lean forward just a bit, maybe about 45, maybe you come all the way down to parallel, whatever feels good for your back. And then point your hands down towards the ground, palms together, and we're gonna take the left arm and paint open. Remember, you can keep your gaze down towards your uh, right hand, and then bring the hands back together. And then the right hand is gonna paint up and open. So the openness of the shoulder is gonna dictate how much uh, the, the chest kind of turns there. So bring the hands back together, take a breath in, and exhale, stand on up. Okay, let's get the strap again. So this time I'm gonna take the strap a little bit, I'm gonna take it up wider, okay? And I'm gonna hold on wider than my shoulders. And we're going to just take the strap around town. 
take it around the world. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it's not just my arms that are moving as I try to circle the strap around my body. My spine, my rib cage is moving as well. So make this a really big movement to begin with that involves your whole body and you can reverse directions. And if you come across a spot that feels like a really good stretch, feel free to, feel free to stay there for a moment. Okay, now we're gonna try and tighten it up a little bit and just get the shoulder action, okay? So we're gonna try to keep the rib cage, keep the spine stationary, and just move the arms. So it doesn't matter which direction you circle in first or how big your circles are, it doesn't matter. Just paying attention to how our range of motion has changed. Does it feel better to you to move in this way? Or does it feel better to move your whole body to get the strap to circle? Go ahead and switch directions. I know that it does feel better for me to move my whole body for the movement, but this feels like it's doing something good for my shoulders. It's, it's, I would, I would liken it to the first movement, my whole body movement being dessert. And this is like a vegetable, <laughs> which I really like vegetables, but they're not quite as satisfying sometimes as um, chocolate cake. So, okay, now we're gonna take the strap up and back behind us. Okay, so as you start to take the strap back behind you, make sure that you're still breathing into the ribs in the back side of your body, okay? And then from here, bend your elbows a bit, and you're gonna kind of floss from side to side here. Maybe feeling some stretch or opening sensation in the chest. And let's pull over to the left, so left arm straight, right elbow bent. Take a deep breath in. And relax. And switch over to the other side, right arm straight. Again, take a deep breath in. And exhale. Great job. Now let's go ahead and lift the arms straight up. Still kind of trying to rip the, rip the strap apart. But now we're gonna take the strap over to the right, coming into a side stretch. Keep pulling the strap apart and on your next exhale, let's come back up. Why are we coming up on the exhale? That's because when you exhale naturally, your core kind of sucks in, stabilizes a little bit. It's not something that you have to make happen, it's just what happens. And so that adds a little extra stability and force to your movement. Okay, over to the left. Still trying to rip the strap apart. Great job, go ahead and come back upright and lower your arms. Let's put the strap off to the side for now. We will use it one more time a little bit later. Okay, and from here, we're gonna step the feet nice and wide, turn the toes out wider than the heels, and squat down. Again, we're throwing in the legs with the arms and the shoulders, okay? Rest your hands on your thighs down towards your knees, and you're gonna lean your torso forward, dip your right shoulder forward, take a deep breath in and out. And then dip your left shoulder forward. And here in that twist, take a deep breath in and out. Great job, come back to center and stand up. Okay, we're gonna come down to the ground and this is where you're gonna need your books. Okay, you're gonna wanna sit with your back up against something, whether that's a wall or a couch or a chair that's not going to move. Um, just 
give yourself that added benefit of support for your back so that we can focus on our shoulders. And similarly, I know that sometimes sitting on the ground like this can be um, hard on the lower back if you know, like your hamstrings are really tight. So we're all going to bend our knees and rest our heels on the ground, okay? That should give us the, the freedom in our pelvis and in our back to maintain this nice upright posture. And now, because we have something behind us, we have that tactile reminder on the back side of our body that we can breathe back there, okay? So take a moment and feel that. Can you focus your breath or imagine your breath going more into the back side of your body? You know, when you go to the doctor's office, they don't just listen to your lungs in the front of your body. They put the stethoscope on your back and listen to your breathing there as well. There's so much space back there because your heart's not there, right? Your heart's more on the front of your body. So your ribs actually have more room. Your lungs actually have a little bit more room to expand in the back side. Okay, so grab your books. We're gonna do a little play in here. I hope you think it's fun. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna hold one book in each hand um, like a serving platter, okay? So I'm starting with my elbows pointing straight down towards the ground. My fingertips are pointing away from my torso. And then I'm going to turn my wrists to point my fingertips towards the wall behind me and keeping my elbows forward, I'm gonna press those books up any amount. Now, I could, pr I could press my arms straight and, and get the books even higher, but that's gonna change the rotation in my shoulders. Things are gonna be a little different. So I encourage you to just keep your elbows pointing forward and straighten only as much as you can uh, while keeping your upper arms rotated like this. Because when you straighten your arms, inevitably your elbows are gonna point out to the sides, okay? So then lower down and rotate your fingertips to face away from your torso. And now extend your arms out any amount away from you. Again, elbow creases pointing up, elbow points pointing down. Now bring those books back towards you Rotate the wrists so you're and forearms so your fingertips point towards the wall. Elbows point forward. Press up any amount and lower back down. Point your fingertips away from your chest and serve the books forward any amount. Now I don't feel like I can straighten my elbows with how big these books are, and I'm. I didn't choose two equally matched books, but I think that's okay. Now, from here, go ahead and open the books out wide, any amount. Great job. Serve them forward again. <laughs> open the books out wide and serve them forward again. And now bring them back in, bend your elbows, point them straight down, rotate forearms and wrists so the fingers point towards the wall. Press your arms up, any amount. Elbows stay pointing straight ahead. This left one wants to go out, but I'm gonna encourage it to hug in. Lower the books down to your shoulders. Rotate forearms and wrists, fingers point forward. Serve it up. Open it out wide. And then from here, gonna bring the books to your shoulders straight from that wide position. So there is a rotation that happens in the forearms and wrists. And then again, we're gonna press up. I'm feeling it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the chorus of this class. I'm feeling it. <laughs> now rotate your fingertips to point out side to side and serve the books out side to side. Sorry, Monty. Um, and then go ahead and bring the books back out in front of you. Bend your elbows and release. <sighs> okay, go ahead and open your arms out wide. So again, I'm so sorry to my plant. So if your legs are feeling fatigued in this bent knee position, feel free to give them a break and straighten them out. 
just as long as you still feel comfortable in your back. Okay, so we're gonna try, you know, nestling our back into the wall, specifically the part of our back, part of our spine where our rib cage connects. It might be hard to get your lower back against the wall and that's fine, um, but maybe you can get your rib cage, the back of your rib cage, your shoulder area against the wall, and then maybe you can get your head against the wall as well. But if you need to keep your head a little bit further away from the wall so that you feel like you can still breathe, that's okay too. <laughs> Find what's kind, okay. So now go ahead and open your arms wide, spread your fingers wide, and see if you can contact the wall with all 10 fingernails. Okay. And then can you push your fingernails, your wrists, your forearms, your shoulder blades back into the wall? Now for bonus points, <laughs> as if you need anything else to focus on. For bonus points, breathe into your back. It's just a reminder too that bonus points are totally arbitrary. This isn't like a pass fail or a graded class. For three, two, and one. Great job, go ahead and relax your arms down. Okay, let's scoot away from the wall. So um, to make myself a little bit more comfortable on the ground, I'm actually gonna sit on my book. Um, but if you have a yoga block around or you have a blanket or a pillow and you'd like to sit on that, please feel free to do that as well. Sometimes when we work a lot on our shoulders, it can bring a little tension into our neck. So we're just gonna kind of loosen up a little bit before we close out our time together. So relax your arms down by your sides. Maybe your fingertips touch the ground, maybe not. You can also do this seated in a chair if that's more comfortable for you. So starting with looking straight ahead, we're gonna just tip the left ear over towards the left shoulder. And then we're gonna pump the right hand down towards the ground. So as we do that, the right shoulder joint is gonna rise and depress, rise and depress just a little bit. You probably don't have a lot of range of motion to um, make a big movement here down because you've already taken the slack out of this area by bringing your ear to your shoulder. Okay. And then go ahead and come back up to center. And let's go ahead and take the right ear over to the right shoulder. Ooh, this side is a little cranky for me today. Uh, let's go ahead and pump the left hand down now. For three, two, one. Go ahead and come back up right. Okay, one last thing with the strap, as promised. So go ahead and grab your strap and you can stay seated. If you're in a chair, you might wanna turn sideways or scoot towards the edge of your seat so that you don't bump your arms into the chair back. Okay, I'm gonna turn around so that you can see what's happening behind me here. So I'm gonna hold this strap in my left hand and I'm gonna let it drape down my back. And my left elbow is going up a little bit towards the ceiling. And I'm gonna take my right arm around. So my palm is facing away from my spine and I'm gonna reach for the strap here. Now, this is a common position in yoga, but I am going to encourage you to keep it a little bit more active. So you might be um, used to like resting your hands on your back or on your head. And here I would like for you to try continuing to pull tension on the strap and keep your hands a little bit away from your back and your head. So I turn sideways so that you can see that. Okay. And then we're gonna floss up 
and down. Doing a lot of flossing here today, huh? Up and down. Great. And that's it for that side. So let's go ahead and switch to the other side as I get resituated facing you. So you're gonna hold a strap in your right hand and dangle it behind your back. Take your left hand around back so your left palm faces away from your spine. And you're remember, you're holding the strap a little bit away from your back and away from your head, pulling tension. Remember, if you could breathe into your back, I know I give so many instructions. You, you don't ever have to do everything, just do what you can. And then floss. Notice if this side feels any different. For three, two, and one. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Put that strap off to the side. Shake out your arms, your hands, your wrists. Do a few uh, shoulder circles. I almost said shoulder circles. <laughs> Do some shoulder circles. Okay, and then just let's take a, a quiet moment before we move on with the rest of the day. So find a comfortable resting place for your hands on your, lap, on your lap or on your knees. Maybe you close your eyes and maybe you can find that feeling of breath in the back of your body again. Let your facial muscles soften. Let your shoulders soften away from your ears. Just enjoy a few more quiet moments here. Feeling your breath, enjoying your breath. Maybe feeling gratitude for your breath. And then let's go ahead and Tip the chin down to the chest. Maybe feeling a nice little stretch on the back of the neck there as we do so. Flutter your eyes open. And then lift your gaze. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today to work on your shoulders and your arms. I hope that it felt so helpful. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>